watching Buzz with Jess Luha. Good evening, Guam. I'm Jess Luhan. Welcome back to the Buzz. My studio guest, of course, former, uh, not former, <laughs> Senator Rory Spicio, the uh, majority leader. Uh, and likewise, we're going to be talking about, because he's got oversight of the Commission on the Colonization as the, the oversight chairman of that under the legislature. Um, Senator, um, gosh, I'm, I've got right before me a, uh, a, a statement by Ed Alvarez, executive director of the Commission on the Colonization for the government of Guam, as he presented, of course, to the United Nations. And this was dated June of this year. That's uh, six months ago. Um, funding is an issue. It's always an issue. I mean, you know, I had oversight, <laughs> as you have now, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, of course, at the time, we, we funded uh, the Commission to Colonization because it was, it, my name was there. So kind of brought it together, gave it the funding to give it the people, you know. And <clears throat> at the time, I think it was James Underwood that had over at, uh, was the facilitator, but the, the director there, and, and at the time, 20 or 2008 was a doable plebiscite time, uh, but it was based on based on registry. Looks like looked like 2010 was a more feasible time for that, which was the last gubernatorial election. Ed Alvarez says um, uh, August of 2015 was a, a doable date. That's not a gubernatorial election, and. I've talked to, to folks who were involved in the past plebiscite. They said you got to make a gubernatorial election. Um, what, what uh, you know, as the oversight chair, what ingredients came about to to allow or to look at August of 2015 as a, a doable date? Well, at uh, one point, the commission uh, talked about establishing this date, mm -hmm. and Senator Guthridge had a law that serves, that uh, established those kinds of parameters, mm -hmm. right? Once you have an education campaign, and once you have your registry that um, Senator Ben is uh, mm -hmm. putting out, then once you meet these certain thresholds, then then our island is ripe for this uh, mm -hmm. uh, this plebiscite uh, for for all those who were born or have descendants here, August mm -hmm. 1st of 1950. Uh, and so it's uh, date-based and not uh, race-based. Sure, sure. And I, I think the first um, major mis mis misstep that uh, Mr. Alvarez made, and uh, Senator Pennington caught him up on it, was he said it was a tomorrow-only vote. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, and that's that's exactly why the Dave Davis is uh, want to say that this is a uh, discrimination mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, gets racially mm -hmm. uh, charged. Uh, but he said he was misquoted. So be it as it may, he was misquoted, as he said. Well, it's I constantly was, misquoted then yeah, because I well mean, I, we keep reading about it. Yeah, I was basically. I was pushing to have this during a gubernatorial mm -hmm, election because mm -hmm. you're right, uh, you're going to get more people coming out to participate, mm -hmm. and uh, this should be front and center sure. of any any sure. type of election that's going to draw the most pe people mm -hmm. out. And I I guess they they preferred that it be uh, 2015 mm -hmm. after a gubernatorial election, no, no, which I the, thought it was really one unfortunate. One of the things uh, basically said he says uh, well, well the misconception out there too that's being given is, is that the the first plebiscite the first vote will be basically in indigenous folks, right? Where he said was misquoted. Mm -hmm. But he said there's going to be two votes. And everyone will have the opportunity when they vote for a constitution. And, in, you know, again, I, I'm looking at the, the three, three different statuses. Now, maybe if the status of, of statehood wins, maybe the status of uh, free association wins. Now, maybe that's true, okay? Um, I talked to the folks who, are, who have been or continue to be involved in the independent movement. I said, have you decided? Has it been decided that uh, for sure, <coughs> if independence were to prevail in the, in the plebiscite, that everyone will have an opportunity to vote? I say, absolutely not. So where do we get this uh, two votes? First, uh, a, a plebiscite vote to decide will be only based on, on the definition of the 1950. Yeah. Uh, okay. And where did that come from? And the, the second vote that everybody's included. Well, the last uh, meeting we had, um, I was uh, I was uh, able to to chair that because I was stepping in uh, mm -hmm. for the governor. And you're the vice the chair, chairman. of course. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so you know the the consensus then was you know when when Mr. Alvarez said that uh, everybody will get to vote. Uh, of course, not everybody agreed. Mm -hmm. So I said that's the main issue here is I think we should get uh, the attorney general mm -hmm. or some uh, executive branch uh, lawyers to sit down with the commission and go through what uh, they believe the process mm -hmm. is that established by law. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so if, uh, if uh, Mr. Garrido is saying that uh, if independence um, or a free association prevails, then only those who would qualify under that kind of arrangement would vote sure. for the Constitution. Sure. Uh, someone else is saying if it's saying it's independence or like you point out mm -hmm. statehood. Uh, so we have to kind of uh, agree um, 
you know, everybody, the community, that this is what the process is. So sure. even 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 before uh, the commission and uh, Mr. Alvarez uh, and even the governor moves forward in trying to have this vote, I think it's incumbent upon all of us to agree to a process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, no, one of the things here, you know, because we've heard uh, we've heard figures, two hundred thousand, two hundred fifty thousand, yeah. three hundred thousand. We heard a million. I mean, you know, if, it, if in fact it's going to be a million, if in fact it's going to be 300000 and if we're not going to get the, the money from the Department of the Interior that we've been asking, and uh, supposedly his, his, Mr. Alvarez's letters hasn't been responded to, and maybe because he's signing it and not the chair and, <coughs> and the vice chair, you know, of, of the Mission of Colonization. But I guess if we're, we were going to fund it, if it's going to be local funding, a uh, million dollars is probably not doable in, in, in one fiscal year, right? But it can be, I think, uh, I think as, as, as chair, you would probably say, okay, every year I'm going to give you this amount, and this, this amount will go towards this year's uh, fiscal <coughs> year's uh, um, uh, education process, you know, until we get to, get, get to that. But have, have there been requests to the legislature? Because you keep, they keep saying no funding, no funding, but uh, yeah, no funding if you're not asking. Yeah, they're not asking, and uh, and and what what the commission told um, Mr. Alvarez is that you know the governor as chairman controls the uh, BBMR uh, budget ceilings, mm -hmm. and so so when the commission so I asked him what kind of budget did you um, submit to the legislature because I knew the answer is sure. a status quo budget. Mm -hmm. How can he say that uh, he's asking for more money when? You know, when his boss is the chairman, number one, and number two, uh, they never made those requests to the legislature for an increase in well, the, no, uh, the budget. Sure, but I think, sure. you know, fundamentally, I, I'm hoping that uh, this is going to be the fourth year of um, Governor Calvo's administration. I think uh, he needs to make good on his uh, promise to convene the Guam First Commission. He did it uh, one time, and then we never uh, met after that. Imagine if the, if the governor of Guam, as chairman of the Guam First Commission, convenes uh, all these different uh, facets of our community and starts putting all these uh, federal territorial issues on the table that we can agree to uh, mm -hmm. as a group and have the delegate there as well mm -hmm. to move these things forward. You know, we we, sure. we, we can accomplish a lot, yeah. Senator. You know, what, what, one of the things uh, he, um, Mr. Alvarez said in this presentation in the United Nations is the, in the area of funding and they're finding, you know, all these the creative ways to, to, to come up with funding. One of the things he mentioned here is says in the area of funding, the public education program, the commission has proposed to change the local law relative to tax credits. We seek to amend this law and allow the commission to give tax credits to people or businesses who donate services, tangible and real property, or any item suitable for tax credit allotment. Uh, soon, jointly sponsored uh, bill by the governor and legislature is proposed to be introduced. Is there any any such bill that's in that mean it's in the works at this point? No, I mean he may have uh, talked about that, but we haven't seen those words being put on uh, paper. Uh, by way of a bill. Uh, and a lot of things that the commission is uh, concerned about is uh, the things that uh, he represents uh, in those um, international arenas that are not sanctioned by, by the commission. And so I, you know, I, I think we have, um, we have a big opportunity to mm -hmm. kind of bring everybody uh, back. Uh, Governor Calvo has an opportunity as chairman to uh, provide the mm -hmm. leadership that's going to get everybody to agree as to a process. Imagine you're sitting there and uh, Mr. Alvarez is saying, well, uh, those certain people will get to vote mm -hmm. and decide finally mm -hmm. what kind of status they want. And then secondly, uh, all of all of the those living on Guam mm -hmm. who have U.S. citizenship will get to ratify constitution. Now let me, now let me, let me ask you this, prior to making this uh, a statement, are presenting this uh, this uh, statement to the United Nations on behalf of the people of Guam, statement by the Alpha Executive Director, Commission, the Colonization, Government of Guam. Uh, did you have any knowledge of this presentation? No, no, and uh, neither did the other uh, commission members. And so I, I think uh, you're seeing some commission members, including myself, really asking that that they run those testimonies uh, through the commission. I, I would, and I, yeah. I, 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 when I read this and I heard that it was, and I said, you know, if I was in legislature, I would have censored the Mr. Alvarez in, in 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 this because wait a minute, you're not you're representing, you're misrepresenting something, and then also here he said it was the media that was misrepresenting and I, I'm going I'm reading these things and I'm trying to get from you the chair yeah. whether this is misrepresenting and then, and then the other thing Senator Jesse is uh, the governor certainly can take a position on what status he he wants but he needs to take a very neutral position when it comes to the actual uh, self-determination process. There we process go. And We're pay some bills and come right back <laughs> with Senator Respicio. <laughs>